Welcome back to Established with Angela Yee. We are talking to Megan Good, and I love her spirit. She has amazing things to say, so let's find out more of what she's up to. How do you think you've managed to maintain for so long? It's been over 30 years since you started off in this business, and you are still here, but still going strong. So what do you think is a, some, are some of the things that you did for this to make you so established? Um, there's a few. Spiritually, it... For me, it was like by the time I was 19 and I was like in that weird phase transitioning from child to actor, child actor to adult actor, um, a lot of people don't come through that transition. It's a really, really hard one. Um, and that was the first time that I asked God, I was like, I've never asked you if this is what you have for me. I don't even know if I'm doing what I'm supposed to be doing with my life. And so I took a beat and I was like, Lord, is this what you have for me? Because I want what you have for me more than what I think I want for myself. And I need to know, you know, and that's when I got the confirmation that, yes, this is what he has for me, but that's not really about me. It's really about using what he's given me to build his kingdom and to do my part and using my platform for something that's much bigger than how talented I may or may not be, you know? And um, spiritually, I think that, having a perspective has helped ground me and has helped keep me here. And, and, and I believe not even just to help keep me here. I believe that God has honored the fact that I want to honor him or maybe it's just what he has for me. I don't know. But, and then I think practically um, I've, I've been, my pace has been steady, slow and consistent. So it wasn't like I shot up here and then, you know, I shot down or I shot up a little bit and shot down. It's always been a very kind of small climb, you know, and um, people knew me as a child actor, but they didn't know me like super well. You know, people knew me in my 20s, but like they didn't know me super well, you know, and I think even now I don't make any assumptions. I'd be, I know our culture knows me but there's still rooms that I get into and there, you know, there's people who, who don't really know me like that at all, or they may have seen like one thing I did, it was Minority Report on Fox, you know, or whatever it is. So um, I never make any assumptions about who I am because I, I don't think it really matters. I, I think that for me, it's really about being, staying humble, being really, really thankful because there's a lot of women who are beautiful, a lot of women who are talented, a lot of women who who can do other things that I can't even do, and God has allowed me to be here. And so I think it's it's about again always back to perception and attitude. And I think I just God has allowed me to be here. So you also got baptized at 19, right? Yeah. What made you decide yeah. to do that? Um. Well, growing up. I, I got saved when I was 12 um, through the youth group that I was at. I, I had a, a friend who was in a car accident and there was five, five of them and I knew two of them and the other three all passed away. Um, one of them was a five-year-old girl, they were babysitting. And the other two that went to school with me, they um, were two girls who basically like looked out for me you know when I was dealing with racism and stuff there were two Latina girls who just had my back and like if anyone messed with me they'd be like don't mess with her you know and uh, when the accident happened one of them ended up getting um, severe brain damage and the other one who came out least um, least unscathed but still she still went through a lot um, she ended up getting saved and I was just like confused I was like how do you how do you get saved after you lose three people and like and like your best friend gets brain damage and like I was like I don't understand how that would lead you to God I would think that that would lead you away from God and she just set the example for me to get very very curious about God and so um, I ended up getting saved and then of course a lot of times when you get saved your journey you're young and your walk and so I was like didn't know a whole lot about a whole lot. So I was like super religious. Like nobody told me when they lost their virginity and we were like 15, everyone's like, don't tell Megan. And like, <laughs> I, said, I lost her virginity. I was like 14 and she was 16. <laughs> and I like remember going to her and I was like, Lamaya, I was like, I just don't want you to go to hell. Like I was like that, <laughs> like wow. religiously. So, You're like the girl um, in the movie, if not now, <laughs> when judgmental. Girl, <laughs> oh, I was mad judgmental. I was like, you know, and and it wasn't until I got like a little bit older because then I started to stray because 
something about the way I think I was going about it didn't fully resonate with me. So when I was 19, when I came back, because that's really what was in my heart and that's really who I was and am. And um, the journey wasn't about anything else but me and God. And that's when I decided to get baptized because that's when I began to, who, to understand who I am in him spiritually. So you did have a wild period in your life though, as you were in this business, right? Would you say like partied sure. a lot and was out having sure. a great time? <laughs> For sure. I think through my twenties, I probably went out six days a week. For so me. you got baptized and then you went and party six days a week. <laughs> yeah, I got baptized, but I'd be in the club talking to someone about Jesus. I'd be in the strip club in Atlanta talking to a stripper, like telling her how much God loves her and how much she deserves and how much, you know, it's like, even though my way, I'd be on the cover of King Magazine. I mean, my way was like, look, I'm not in lingerie. I'm not in nobody's G-string. I'm not having nobody's back shot. You can't see my breasts. I am a Christian very much and I'm in love with Christ above everything. However, I am who I am. And if I don't feel convicted about this, then that's between me and God. And so at that time, you know, as time has gone on, my convictions have changed a bit, but I'm not a judgmental person, or at least I, I like to think that I'm not. And I believe everyone deserves their journey and their process. As long as you have a real authentic relationship with God, that's not necessarily, at least for me, not based in religion. You should do this and you should do that. You shouldn't do this. You shouldn't do that. To me, bump all that. Have a relationship with Christ. Know who he is in your heart. Truly, truly know him and hear from him. And he will guide you how you're supposed to go when you're supposed to go there. And, and I think everyone is in, entitled to that journey. I know that I don't think I could be useful or effective to someone else and have conversations with women if I couldn't say, yeah, I've been there. Yeah, I've been through that. Yeah, girl, I used to go out crazy. I used to drink like this. I used to do this. I used to do that. I think that is the part of me that allows me to pour into somebody else's life because I'm not pouring in from the aspect of a religious person, like, let me help you because I'm great. It's like, no, I've been there. I've, I've been through just as much as you have. And God sees us exactly the same. It don't matter what I do for a living. We're exactly the same. How can I help? What, what am I supposed to pour into you? What are you supposed to pour into me? All right, guys, we are going to take a really quick break, but don't go anywhere because we will be right back talking some more with Megan Good, super talented, super beautiful, and really sweet, as you can see, on Established. 